Is this proof that we live in the matrix? What a professor has now discovered could bring our reality completely crashing down. Be sure to stay tuned until the end if you want to have a real identity crisis. And if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more simulated humans. Thank you friends and welcome. Take the red pill or the blue pill? That's the question we have to ask ourselves today because it's about the matrix, the idea that our reality is a complex computer simulation. Sounds like something out of a Hollywood movie at first, but it has actually become a serious topic of scientific discussion in recent years, and some even go so far as to say that there is not just one matrix, but countless ones, none less than Elon Musk says. The universe is 13.8 billion years old, so every civilization that has appeared in it has had plenty of time to improve its technologies. This eventually leads to the simulation being indistinguishable from reality, or the civilization will end. Somehow it makes sense. Any civilization that exists long enough will eventually have the technology to create such a simulation. And if that is inevitable, then somehow there is a lot to suggest that we are already in such a simulation. So perhaps we are being simulated by advanced aliens, we are their sims. Although simulation theory has gained popularity in recent years, the idea that reality is an illusion is not actually new. Even ancient philosophers such as Plato pondered the possibility that the sensory world we perceive is not the true reality, but only a shadow world. You've probably heard of Plato's allegory of the cave, in which people are trapped in a cave and can only see the shadows of real objects on the wall. Unless you were always fetching chalk in philosophy class, then you probably don't know it. According to simulation theory, metaphorically speaking, we sit in the cave and only see the shadows on the wall in the form of things that appear real to us, but are in fact only simulated and are at best anchored in reality via the programming code. Of course, we can speculate forever about what this reality looks like, but one thing is clear. Even in reality outside the simulation, putting pineapple on pizza is outlawed. The only catch with simulation theory is that it cannot be tested until now because what Melvin Vopson a physics professor at the University of Portsmouth in the UK has now postulated has the potential to shake the foundations of reality. Vopson has developed the second law of infodynamics, a theory that focuses on the behavior of information systems. This law stands in contrast to the second law of thermodynamics, which describes the increase in entropy, i.e. disorder, in a closed system. I always see this in my kitchen. The more time passes, the messier everything gets. My wife always says it's because I don't tidy up, but the truth is, of course, that the cause is entropy, which is purely scientific. If you need any more tips for a happy marriage, please let me know. Surprisingly, however, Vopson's second law of infodynamics has now revealed that entropy in information systems either remains constant or decreases over time. What does that mean exactly? Here are a few examples. In atomic physics, Vopson showed how electrons take up position around an atom, minimizing their information entropy over time. This indicates a fundamental connection between information and matter. Another example, analysis of the coronavirus genetic code revealed that the information entropy of its viral variants decreased over the course of genetic mutation. And this actually calls into question the idea that genetic mutation is a random process and raises questions about the theory of evolution. Vopson says, I have observed that genetic mutations occur in such a way that their information entropy decreases even if the number of nucleotides remains constant. This is huge because it challenges Darwin's theory of evolution by claiming that genetic mutations are not random processes. This is the background story to this and how the second law of infodynamics came about. So these are strong assertions that are by no means uncontroversial. But I can already hear some of you nervously asking questions. Yes, but what does that have to do with the Matrix? Am I real or not? We'll get to that now. Let's reiterate what Vopson's fundamental insight is. While thermodynamic entropy always produces chaotic systems, information entropy tends to compress or discard information over time. 
in the sense of optimization. This could explain, for example, why we see so much symmetry in nature. These symmetrical patterns are a way of minimizing and optimizing information. And anyone who has ever defragmented their computer after a long LAN party will perhaps now understand what this is all about. This information minimizing tendency of nature is similar to deleting or compressing information in a computer simulation in order to save memory and optimize energy consumption. So we can say that Vopsin's second law of infodynamics points to a matrix in two ways. First, because of the minimization of information entropy. Information systems tend to minimize their information entropy over time, which indicates a tendency towards optimization and order. And this is similar to the behavior of a computer simulation that compresses information in order to save resources and increase efficiency. Secondly, because of the symmetry and order in nature, if information systems tend to minimize information entropy, this could explain why we see so much symmetry and order in nature. These symmetries could serve as a means of information compression and optimization in a simulated reality. Vopsin says, it is important to keep in mind that the second law of infodynamics is valid, whether the universe is a simulation or not. Being a simulation is a possible consequence or conclusion of this new law. Vopsin now wants to test his theory in a rather wacky experiment in which he wants to make matter and antimatter particles collide with each other. He says that the information of an elementary particle could be detected and measured by colliding particles and antiparticles, and that we can then measure the information content of a particle by deleting it. In other words, if we erase the information from the particle, we can see what remains. And this could be the final proof of the second law of infodynamics, and thus also clarify the implication for simulation theory. He describes it like this. So assuming that the universe is indeed a simulation, it must have many units of information hidden all around us. I have devised an experiment that suggests how to extract this information to prove that it is there. Pretty crazy stuff, but presumably you have to think in such an unconventional direction to prove that our reality might not be real. But now, I'd be interested in your assessment. Are we living in the matrix? Is reality just a simulation? Or is this complete nonsense? I'd be very interested in your arguments, so please write them in the comments. Regardless of whether I'm just simulating or not, I'll of course continue to make videos for you and to make sure you don't miss out, you should subscribe to my channel now. I know from the YouTube statistics that many viewers haven't subscribed, but it's absolutely free, you'll never miss another galactic video and you'll help me immensely. So, everyone, move your simulated fingers to the subscribe button. Let's stick to unbelievable experiments. The most bizarre things really did happen in Soviet science a physicist whose brain was shot through by a particle accelerator. A cosmonaut who crashed to Earth from space and many other incredible stories. Watch the video to find out all about it and see the original footage of these accidents. Not for the faint-hearted, but incredibly interesting. And if you want to support my work, please visit my Astro Shop and get the fluffy plush planets. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.